directed that, in essence, it would call for hires to have Social Security. Good evening. This is a meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. It's April 2nd, 2015. Would you please have the attendance? Ms. Bealy? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Ling? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? Here. Ms. Hartle? Here. Please join me in the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? No. Superintendent's report. <clears throat> I direct your attention to this main DOE proficiency-based diploma extension visit. Um, it is, uh, the date of the visit was 2-25-2015. Um, I uh, received this as a cleaned up version of the report of the DOE team that came to visit. Uh, we requested, um, uh, the board requested a, uh, an extension for the, the timeline on uh, proficiency-based diploma. That was granted, and as a condition of being granted, uh, there are periodic visits to see whether or not the district is uh, making progress. Um, I would just, um, I'm pleased to say that the report was very favorable, um, essentially, and you'll have a chance to read it, uh, the support, the, the uh, report supports our direction for these last 40 months and for the improvement plans uh, that will take us into the future. Uh, they endorse our thoughtful uh, systems thinking approach to um, what we call student-centered uh, learning. They call it proficiency-based and recognizes that we also have constraints. Um, one of those constraints is time in terms of professional learning. Another is uh, technology um, at our high school. And uh, they uh, wrapped up with no recommendations uh, that we change our approach or our trajectory uh, for the work that we have ongoing. So I wanted to share that with you uh, with that little summary as an introduction. And um, I believe that's all I really wanted to cover in my superintendent's report. Do you have a date that our projected that would be? Um, in terms of proficiency based? Yep. 2017, the date for what we're projecting now that we would start proficiency-based graduation. Okay. Thank current, you. What, what seventh grade? graders. Current seventh graders. Current seventh. Okay. Okay. And the chair's report. Um, I really just only have one statement to make tonight, and that's just to uh, express appreciation to all the parents who, you know, have made their voices heard either through email or by coming to our meetings, who attended the meeting a week ago to express their opinion about the calendar, and also to my fellow board members, because I know you've spent a lot of time online or in person with people. Uh, responding to, to various uh, questions around the calendar. So thank you for that. Good job. Okay. Committee reports. Mrs. Perry? Yes, the uh, Maine School Board's uh, Legislative Committee continues to meet via teleconferencing uh, weekly on Tuesdays, and I passed out, uh, cut off the press, the bill that was put on the back burner and is being resurrected, it seems, that would, it, bottom line is, that what it would require is all new hires be part of Social Security and not main retirement system, which means that the town would then be required to pay uh, under Social Security uh, uh, well, I don't see the figure right. 3.36 percent, whereas under the retire, excuse me, 6.2 percent, where under the state retirement we pay 3.36 percent, 
which means, in essence, our contribution for retirement for our employees would about double. So uh, I say it's hot off the press. I got it a couple of hours before I came, and we will be watching that quite closely. Uh, as a member of the, the Board of Directors of Maine School Boards Association, I will be going out to SAD 6 with two of my colleagues on the 11th to help them with boardsmanship, and especially uh, they've asked how we all work together. And uh, as a board, each of our boards, and then as a board for Maine School, school Boards Associations. So with the regards to negotiations, uh, it appears as though we've finalized our contract with the, with the administrators group, and that is now in the editing stage and uh, they have approved the concept, hallelujah, and we are still in negotiations uh, with the cafeteria slash custodial group. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Lane. And the evaluation de development, we call EDG team met on March 22nd at 26, and I wasn't be able to uh, attend. I know we it worked on the eye observation, continue, you know, learning it. Miss um, Seismo, um, do you mind uh, uh, giving it a more? Uh, sure. Um, we, um, we think the state is going to uh, continue the pilot for all of next year, so um, we're hoping to get a direction on that. Um, we have developed a uh, document, a handbook and user guide. There, most of it is done except for the part from the state that has not been cleared up yet, and that is the measure of student growth. Um, so we're waiting to hear from the state. We have completed um, three trainings for all of our school leaders to participate in the eye observation, and um, it's called interrelated reliability um, in regards to protocol scoring and giving uh, people feedback. So we think we're in really good shape, uh, that team does, and we're hoping for the next part, which will be to roll out the uh, eye observation um, program to the teachers. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Mendoza. The Sebago Education Alliance <coughs> met uh, March 9th uh, out in Wyndham, and at that meeting there was conversation about the alliances uh, moving forward now that the Alliance School will no longer be functioning. So um, there were 29 students, 18 staff, and there were six with one-on-one, -on -one. and so um, each school district is now working on placements for those students. Um, Scarborough had three, one was transitioning out, so the other two are um, working with special services um, with Ms. Marchese. Um, also, um, there's still um, conversations about how program coordinations are still going to be continuing with the Sebago Education Alliance. So just because there's no more Alliance School doesn't mean that we're not still working with the group of schools that we've been working with. So um, we are going to be working with curriculum pieces, potential of tech camp, and um, other services at local sites. So um, the next meeting is April 13th, and I'll have another update uh, for that. Thank you. Ms. Murphy? So the policy committee has been meeting. Um, we regularly meet every other Wednesday. Um, in the last few weeks, we have actually bumped that up, and we met every week for the last several weeks. We've talked about the calendar um, a lot and researching other districts' calendars and figuring out if there's a compromise that can be made. Um, and we'll hear more about that, obviously. But we also spent a long time um, evaluating our policy about distribution of um, information that um, people might want to get in what would be usually in a Thursday or a Friday folder for the primary school kids, but we're trying to get away from paper, so we needed to reevaluate that policy because now it's not as labor intensive to get information out to parents because we're putting things on the website. There's actually a link on the website for um, community news, and it's not stuff that's necessarily endorsed by the school, but it has been approved by the superintendent or the designee to um, appear on that page. And it would be things like summer camps or lessons or um, outside sports groups like Little League or Scarborough Youth Lacrosse that are having their registration times. Information that is germane to parents of our students but are not 
school-sponsored events. Um, so we spent a long time um, discussing that policy, and there's also a portion that um, will be coming, I think, for our first meeting at our next business meeting that discusses distribution of materials at school-sponsored events by outside groups. So, um, you know, obviously no religious or political um, information, pamphleting or leafleting uh, would happen, or anything that's not directly related to the education of our students or would not pertain to students, would not be appropriate for kids. Um, and so that, that's a change, that's an addition to the policy, and that will come up for a first reading at the next business meeting. We'll have probably a whole bunch to review at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Ms. Shea? For communications, um, we meet directly after the policy meetings every other Wednesday, so our next meeting is next Wednesday, starting at 10, and then policy will be at 10, communications will be right after at 11. We will be focusing, starting next week, we'll be focusing heavily on the budget, obviously, and trying to get as many questions answered that we hear from the public and getting correct information out there, so you guys are armed with the correct information going forward. Uh, we will also post you know, any information that we get that we don't put on the website, we'll put on Facebook. Make sure you're liking that page because that's the most up-to-date that we can push out to you quickly. And again, I think I say this every time, April 30th is the Community Dialogue. process uh, and we'll work with the town and board communication teams to ensure we get the message out early and often to provide folks with a, uh, enough lead time to plan on attending and start creating some questions. The combined board and council workshop was held last night to review the independent auditors report the school and the town. It's wonderful reading if you all decide it's about four inches thick. Um, the good news um, which was all ba basically good news. There were no real negative reports. From the, t uh, the school department side, um, I'll just read you the comments from the auditor. Um, two best practices recommendations, which, were, which are considered very, very minor. They're just recommendations. They're not penalties or um, uh, discrepancies or anything like that. Um, cash receipts to the school nutrition program was noted, and student activity funds were noted in terms of uh, bank reconciliation evidence for review at the high school in Wentworth School, and cash receipts and dis disbursement approval at the Wentworth School. So very, very minor things. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good opportunity for the community to look at a third-party auditor's approach to both the town and the school's budget to ensure that